opening I'm staff right comments, oh, then you sorry, scroll down there. Yeah. Sorry. Here. I saw you, but I didn't like to see That's okay. You're, you're not really here. here. I'm not really confident. Yeah. 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 See, I can't even yeah. say the word. I don't know where it is. Apple person? Yeah, because. Somebody she was about to say confident. I found it. I found it. Anytime someone hands me one of these devices, I'm like, get it away from me. Okay. Well, you know, it's, it's I love it. VHS just or beta. To, you know? I'm just used to it. It's, yeah. it's comfy for me, and I struggle with my iPhone for work. I, actually, when I went when I went to a MacBook no. right, laptop, no. I thought it was going Where because the phone and the, the, the iPads are almost identical. Yeah, that's just, mm -hmm. but the laptop is uh, it's close, but it's not. What's she yeah, doing? Well, it's 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 yeah. Because she's, she's not the chair So anymore. you're going to have to touch oh, it every five minutes or it's going to, it is going to go to sleep. Just like your computer at right your desk. It off to the grid. <laughs> they all will, they all will time out. Oh. We're, we're trying to order some new for the planners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, no, it's a security yeah. issue. Yes, I did. Yeah. 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 Now, should I be yeah. one of the other side? I appreciate and she showed up, but she didn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. It's up to you. Those guys are on there. She's on the They're on the BFCC meeting site. The well, Civic Club. The yeah, yeah. So yeah. she was troubled. This online. No, this is the downloaded. Okay. So yeah. And I said, they just they wanted to be able to see it like you do on the. If y'all can just bear with us yep. for a minute, we're working on our ta new tablets. This is our first time we've used them here. So, <laughs> so patience, yeah, he's, not, you're, he's just like you. Okay, so how do I get the cycle? Good morning. This is a Citrus County Planning and Development Commission hearing for March the 21st, 2024. If you'd like to join us at this time, I invite you to please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, please give us the grace to be understanding, patient, and tolerant. With these attributes, we can conduct our work in a manner which will be pleasing to thee, our county, and its residents. In the Lord's name, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
Thank you. And for the courtesy of all applicants, the board, and those around you at this time, please place all your cellular devices on silent or mute. And may we get the roll call, please. The following Planning and Development Commission members are present. Richard Barmez, Chair, David Bramblett, Second Vice Chair, James Royce, First Vice Chair, Robert Shara, Stacy Worthington, Michael Facemeyer, and Kurt Stone. Thank you. If any person decides to appeal any decision made by the commission with respect to any matter considered at this hearing, he or she will need a record of the proceedings for such purpose. He or she may need to ensure that the verbatim record of the proceedings is made. Which record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is based? During the public input portions of this meeting, individuals are given three minutes and representatives of an organization are given five minutes. When anyone wishing to speak comes to the podium, please complete a yellow form to hand to the recording secretary. Please print your name, address, and the number of the application for which you are speaking on the form. The yellow forms can be found at the podium by the door. If representing an organization, a letter of authorization must accompany the speaker. Comments will be limited to the topics being heard. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give your address for the tape record. Now at this time, it's an opportunity, this is, we're gonna open the floor to the public and this is an opportunity to come forward to address the commission on any issues that you may wish that is not pertaining to any application that's being heard today. Anyone? All right, at this time I'm gonna close the public portion of the meeting and we have no minutes to approve. So it's time for application number DA-2023-00003. If the applicant's president, please come to the podium and if we can get the staff introduction, please. We're gonna jump into staff announcements oh, and next parte first. You're ready to go, it's fine. You're right. Um, the only announcement I have, where this is our first meeting with the tablets, so the public, please be patient um, with us. At the end of the meeting, we're gonna have some talk about, I've gotten some feedback from some of you before the meeting and, and things we need to adjust or, or work on with this. That's my only staff announcement. So, um, Ms. Lynn, you're up. Yep, sorry. Sure, we've, we've already called uh, the first application. So with regard to that first application, do you have any ex parte communications you need to disclose and we'll start at the end? None. None. Site visit. None. 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 All right, and we'll do the other ones as when we get to them. All right, great, thank you. Apologize for jumping ahead. You're fine. Mm -hmm. This is application DA 2023-00003, Corta Lacanto LLC. This application proposes to amend a development agreement with Gulf to Lake Associates now proposed with Court of Lacanto LLC. Uh, good morning, commissioners and staff. Thank you for my, your time. Uh, my name is Tad Templeton with uh, Corta. Excuse I'm a partner me. there. My uh, last name is Templeton, T E M. Excuse me, sorry. sorry. She's not completely through with the presentation. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. They didn't call you forward. I know it's confusing. Right. You're fine. Keep going. Right. Thank you. The site is part of a larger non-residential site on the southwest corner of County Road 491 and County Road 486 in Lacanto. The applicant would like to remove the requirement for shared signage such as this existing one on site. <coughs> this is the view looking north on County Road 491, looking south on County Road 491, this is the overall development map prepared by staff based on permit submittals. Thank you. Yes, sir, now you can come to the podium. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that, no problem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's start again. Uh, good morning, uh, commissioners and staff. I wanna thank you for your time. My name is Tad Templeton. Temp Tad Templeton. I'm a partner with uh, Corda. Uh, that's Templeton, T-E-M-P-L-E-T-O-N. Uh, my address is 16232 Southwest 92nd Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33157. Um, as was expressed, uh, we're developing the property adjacent to the Walmart at 1838 North Lacanto Highway. Um, 
I'm here uh, to speak about uh, Outparcel 5, which is the newly opened Panda Express, and Outparcel 6, adjacent to Panda, which is currently under construction and will have three tenants and two buildings. Those tenants are Chipotle, AT&T, and Five Guys. Um, we're asking for your recommendation for an amendment to allow for each out parcel to have their own sign, which is consistent with what was a, a, approved uh, at the Black Diamond Center phase one and phase two, which is, allows for each parcel to have the, its, its own sign versus one shared uh, monument sign for each two contiguous out parcels. Um, so uh, Panda Express would basically have their own sign and out parcel six sign would uh, have uh, its own sign with three panels for the aforementioned tenants, Chipotle, AT&T, and Five Guys. Um, the uh, dimensions of the two signs would be uh, uh, consistent, uh, 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 and the design would be consistent with what, what is already there. The signs are basically eight feet by uh, eight feet. Um, and uh, I'd like to uh, uh, just finally uh, uh, address the email from uh, uh, the concerned citizen, Kathy Richter, where she expressed uh, that uh, if each store has its own sign, the shopping center would look uh, cluttered with signs. We absolutely could not agree more. And uh, we want to make sure that the public uh, <coughs> understands and, and, and realizes that um, we're not proposing any changes to the existing shopping center signage, but only asking for this amendment uh, with regard to out, parcel five, out parcels five and six. Um, thank you for your uh, consideration, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Does the staff have any questions? Um, yeah, just one. I didn't realize it's certainly not written that you're just applying this to some of the out parcels, so you'd be open to amending the request to limit it to those out parcels and not the remainder. It wasn't clear in the application. A ab absolutely. We're only okay. looking for these two out parcels. We don't want to amend or change anything or create any, any openings. Okay, and so Clarity, you're trying to look at the, the two southern, southeastern parcels there? <coughs> that, that is correct, out parcels uh, five and, uh, and six. Five is where the, ex where the Panda is ex Expresses that just opened, and then out parcel six is where we would have uh, Chipotle, Five Guys, and uh, AT&T. Okay, thank you. Thank you, does the board have any questions? I do. On my thing here, <coughs> this is another parcel with Arby's below it. There is a parcel with Arby's below it. Would that have a separate sign? We do not own or control that. Oh, you don't? Okay. No. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Chair. One is, if, if this gets approved. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, can you grab a mic? <coughs> I might not be able to talk. Excuse me. <coughs> Come back to me, would you? Mr. Chair. <coughs> Commissioner Worthington. Sir, so you're saying you want to go from one shared sign to three signs along the frontage road there? No, we would basically have, uh, we'd go from one sign to two signs. The way the, the, way the ordinance real, uh, is, is, is set up now, uh, you would have one sign for each two contiguous out parcels. So you would have one sign that would have four names on it because of the size of the sign uh, and the tenants have expressed concern, they end up with basically a two by two panel on each sign. So what we'd like to do is have the um, uh, have a sign just for Panda, which is for that out parcel. And then the second out parcel, out parcel six, would have, again, one sign. It would have three panels on it, be the same size, eight by eight. It would have Chipotle, AT&T, and uh, um, uh, Five Guys, which is consistent with what the signage requirements allow. Thank you. What's the size of parcel six? It's Does probably a little, I don't, I, I don't have that information in front of me, but it's probably just around an acre. They're probably, both of those are probably a, a, around an acre. Three, three uses are gonna go on that acre? It's a, it, it's a, it's a building that's about 6,000, <coughs> 7,000 square feet, so yes. And that's already been approved. You don't have any control over the Hobby Lobby, PetSmart, and Sketches? We do. We are building those. Okay, so where would their sign go? Those will be on the monument sign that is already part of the shopping center. They, they don't have any. Okay, would that, where would that be, though? Would it, be, it wouldn't be up by Mavis Tire because you don't control that, right? No, one more. no that, that. Keep going. There you go. Yeah, on that. that. <coughs> They have their own signage on the on the on the buildings. 
So the, the joint sign for Hobby Lobby, PetSmart, and Skechers would go where? On this drawing. On this drawing, um, hang on. I believe it goes up at the uh, entrance on, uh, on, on 490. Between Mavis and Panda? Yes. So there would be a, a large monument sign for those three uh, uh, larger box stores, and then there would be two signs for Panda Express and Five Guys and AT&T and whatever, you something else. And then Arby's naturally would have a sign, even though you don't control that. Correct. McDonald's has a sign. Our Mavis has a sign. So yes. there would be one, two, three, four monument signs with anywhere between three signs <coughs> and one sign. Panda would have their own sign. And then the three concerns in the, where it says Five Guys, AT&T, would have a joint monument sign. And then Arby's naturally, even though you don't control, would have a sign. Correct. Right. And Commissioner Royce, I, I am not a hundred percent sure where that sign where that, that sign goes. Uh, Joanna or Elizabeth, I don't know if, if, if we've we've got that where that project sign goes. I'll discuss some of this in my presentation. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yep. Commissioner Worthington. Sir, this was a development agreement that was negotiated. What is your compelling interest or reason for making this change? We're being uh, approached by the uh, by the tenants who are concerned with uh, their being able to be recognized uh, and uh, have adequate signage um, and uh, in, in order to maximize their sales and uh, maximize the benefit to uh, ultimately to, uh, to us and to the uh, uh, the, the county in terms of uh, taxes and things that they would be paying. Uh, so we're, we're trying to uh, just uh, um, help them out. Uh, if the signs were <coughs> w w was bigger, as I said, we ending, if we end up uh, having to work under the uh, constraints of the 8 by 8 sign, each one of these uh, panels becomes a 2 foot by 2 foot sign, which is, you know, basically this big, as opposed to uh, the, uh, the, the three signs on, on one. But they can still do the signs on the building? Pardon me? They can do the signs on the building also? They do have their signage on the building, yes. That is correct. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right, seeing none, then. Thank you, sir. And we get the uh, staff presentation. All right, so as we talked about, this is a development agreement amendment for a 2011 development agreement. Now, this is what the existing um, signage that's shared that he was referencing that's going to have the Hobby Lobby type development here. And let me clear up a little bit what was discussed. So this was uh, what we have on permits. We did not have Chipotle added in as a third tenant between Five Guys and AT&T on that lot. So what's being asked ask right now is a shared, there's one shared sign here. Glory Days is under construction, almost open. Um, they would share one here, that's part of the development agreement. They share one here, which is in place. I'll have a picture of that in a second. And they share one here. What he's asking for is a sign, a sign, a sign, a sign, although he said it's not right here. So it's, if it's just those two parcels, that's a little different. That's asking for one additional sign. Arby's is under control of the developer. This is one big development agreement. I know he's saying it's not under their control. Um, they may have deeded it or whatever, but um, Mavis and, and McDonald's are built. We tried to put uh, Panda Express, since I made this slide, has been built too. The blue is supposed to represent what's already in place. So this is what they provided. This was their three um, tenant monument sign that they were, uh, may have been intending. Don't really have any comments on that. This is the shared sign for McDonald's and Mavis right now. Um, I did want to point out how very visible this particular sign is from 491. Uh, you can see it very clearly on 491. And what's also in play here is the development agreement talks about wall signs, but the wording wasn't the best. This is 2011 we're going back to, where we hadn't had a ton of development like this at that time. This was really the first big box we'd done like this. And it was also a very early um, entry into our small box, big box standards. So the facade standards and the, the wall sign standards 
were unfortunately, in my opinion, misinterpreted. And they gave this development quite a bit more wall signage than they're currently allowed. The Land Development Code, the way it's worded, they, they added up all the facades on all four sides and allowed them wall signage. It's supposed to be frontage. So they have three to four times what's allowed for wall signage. And you can see that on Mavis Tire. There's a lot of wall signage right there that wouldn't normally be allowed in a land development code. That's a lot. And they have it on the other side too. But it also what, what it does is make this a very visible business. So the requirement to get an additional sign is questionable for visibility. I, we know Mavis is here. They also have this particular sign which they can go on besides the shared freestanding sign. And I wanted to show glory days too because I thought that was part of this application. If we're not including it, that's fine. But this is where the shared sign would go between them. And I also wanted to point out, I can see Mavis here from 486. That's a long way away and I can tell very clearly already that there's a Mavis tire there. The wall signage all on all four sides at this huge amount, I don't think it justifies an additional freestanding sign. So this is also a large monument sign that's allowed on 486. Not really sure why Walmart and McDonald's are the only ones here. Assume that the others will be added eventually. So staff cannot support the additional wall sign, I mean additional freestanding signs simply because there's a lot of wall signage already allowed here. Visibility wise, I think it was a great idea to do shared signage here. McDonald's and Mavis have proved it worked. So um, not supporting this particular application. Any questions? Does the applicant have any questions for staff? Um, I, I just want to point out Please come to the podium. So the, uh, the the Walmart sign that was uh, was, was was shown. That's where uh, the Mr. The Chair. This is supposed to be a question of oh. staff, not a further right. testimony at at this stage. Yes. Any questions on my presentation? To me. No, I don't have any questions. All right. Thank you. Does the board have any questions for staff? I do. <coughs> Joanna, the where Sorry. it says PetSmart and then it says Hobby Lobby. That other parcel just to the left of that, what is that? Are you talking about this drainage, over here? Right there. Yeah. Drain, drainage area. That's a oh, DRA. That's just a DRA. Mm -hmm. The only undeveloped parcels right now are this one next to Glory Days and then Arby's, which is coming, and the Five Guys AT&T, which is not quite there yet. It's in permitting. Thank you. And I have a question. Mr. Mm -hmm. Um Mr. Templeton uh, spoke about the signage along the other side of 486. I remember that pretty specifically. I, I don't remember that we allowed each parcel to have its own signage there. I remember they asked for it. There was a mix. There was some that have shared signage and some that did not, that they were labeled specifically on the master plan. Right. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from the All right, thank you. <coughs> the public portion of the meeting will now be open. If there's anyone present who would like to speak on this application, please come forward to the podium. As a reminder, individuals have three minutes and organizations have five minutes. When speaking on this application, please address the board. If you have any documentations you want to be entered into record, please provide a copy to the recording secretary. Hi, Mike Sarwinski, professional address 2716 South Lacanto Highway. I'm speaking as, as a citizen of Citrus County today. Um, the intent, I think, of the land development code with the big box stores was to model places like Hilton Head, South Carolina, very similar to Hilton Head. Uh, most of the planners know this, low profile signs, shared signs, now tell me if anybody has driven past Panda and doesn't know it's there and they don't have a sign up yet. So I think staff's point, I support staff in their decision. I think a shared sign uh, is, is fine. And that, that woman's letter that he referenced, uh, one of the things that Hilton Head deals with and other communities like this is, a, uh, is a, something called sign saturation. If we have a corner 
with 15, 20, 30, 40 signs. If you've driven down US Highway 19 in Port Ritchie all the way to Clearwater, anybody that drives that realizes that you need to use your GPS. The signs barrage you to the point, again, saturation, to where you don't actually see them anymore. Uh, it's like, can you pick out a tree from the forest? So I support the staff's decision of denial. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Last call. All right, seeing none, the public portion of this hearing is now closed. Does the applicant have any rebuttal to the public opinion? No. Does the staff have any rebuttal? I don't get any, but thank you. Thank you. And right, we'll bring it back to the board for a discussion or a motion. Did we, uh, Mr. Chair, I forgot to bring my Warren. motion papers, so I don't know how to make a motion today. Oh, good. <laughs> I covered you. Thank you. I brought mine. Okay, you got it? Okay. If anybody else wants to talk while I figure this out. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. I Commissioner Chair. I'm sorry. Your, your Can you please sir. move a mic closer? I'm sorry. I moved it during my coughing spat. I'm sorry. Um, I support the staff's comments and concerns. The the existing shared monument signs, uh, example, in on page um, 83 of the packet, the, the combined McDonald's Mavis sign. I actually think that. In reality, they're pro probably not even necessary given, given the frontage signs, but I think it's important to keep the visual clutter in these key parts of our county in line. So I, I want to let you know I'll support staff and I will be voting appropriately. Thank you, Commissioner Scherer. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Worthington. I agree with Mr. Scherer and I would like to, for a motion, the, P the Planning and Development Commission finds application number DA-2023-00003 inconsistent with the Citrus County Comprehensive Plan and Citrus County Land Development Code and that this board recommends denial of the application to the Board of County Commissioners based upon the evidence and testimony presented and the staff report and conclusions regarding this petition. Second. We have a, a first by Commissioner Worthington, a second by Commissioner Facemeyer. Mr. Is Chair, it, can we have a second? Yes. Another motion. Uh, I'm not sure if that motion is D A. B C C recommendation denial. She's looking that up. This application will be discussed by the Board of County Commissioners on April 23rd. I, I don't really see a better one. <laughs> I, I mean, I just. Sorry. Uh, uh, for the just, purpose of discussion, just just so um, it can be on the record that I I do not support the additional signage. Uh, like Mr. Zerwinski said, the Panda Express, Express without a sign out front is clearly, clearly visible. Uh, I can 100% understand the business owners and you know the franchisees wanting or uh, requesting the signage out there. But what I can tell you is that Citrus County is super excited to have all of these um, opportunities for new uh, new restaurants and 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 retail establishments. The, the difference between having a sign there and not having a sign there will be negligible in my opinion. So I, I do not support it. I think it's a nice clean look out there. I, I think that uh, just because other areas have a bunch of signs doesn't mean Citrus County should. And we should just keep the nature in the nature coast. Thank you, Commissioner. Any further discussion? Okay, so we have a, a motion uh, to deny for Commissioner Worthington. Second by Facemeyer. All in favor, say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Approved. Thank you. Now it's time for uh, application number PUD-2023-00014. If we can get the ex parte communication from the county attorney. With regard to this application, do you have any ex parte communications you need to disclose for the record? And we'll start at the end with Mr. Shera. Site visit. None. Site visit. None. None. Site visit. None. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right, thank you. The applicant's present. If you please come forward while the staff gives the uh, presentation. Clark Sewell for Sterling Residential LLC and Sterling Commercial LLC, Lacanto Preserve. This request is to modify and expand a PUD on 142 acres to modify the southern access to County Road 491 and allow single family <clears throat> in the GNC district. An aerial view of the subject property. View of the subject property from State Road 44 looking across the commercial portion. Looking east on State Road 44. Looking west on State Road 44. Looking across State Road 44. The master plan including the revision area as submitted by the applicant. And a close up of the revision area as submitted by the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Stillwell. Uh, good morning. For the record, my name is Clark Still. I represent the applicant. My professional address is 320 South Highway 41, the Brandon Bank in Inverness, Florida. Um, just to update you, I was here several months ago and uh, presented to you an amendment to this PUD uh, on the north end of it relative to the ability to cite a VA clinic. Uh, this board and the county commissioners made that change. Uh, I can tell you that the applicant was not the successful party for the VA clinic on this parcel, but we appreciate your courtesy. So those alternate uses that were approved at that time, which are essentially residential in character, will go in there. Um, in that regard, I can also tell you that we have pending with the county utility division an offsite uh, agreement for the upgrading of central water and sewer along State Road 44 and 491 to this project, to uh, uh, Crystal Glen, into the uh, commercial area uh, north of this project, Sterling Residential, uh, Sterling Commercial LLC. So we are progressing and we're also progressing with preliminary plats, which brings us to the current application, which is just a map amendment to the south entry site. Post the approval, uh, my client and uh, the county engineering department and the abutting parcel to the south went through several meetings, several iterations of uh, the potential access on the site. The issue is separation of driveways to meet LLC code. The final resolution was that the existing uh, county roadway would be utilized per the map. Uh, the client would be responsible for that. The drainage retention area that is along US 19 per the staff engineering reports uh, is potentially to be joint drainage between the county and the applicant. I can tell you that the county's drainage retention area there noted on the map to the north is pretty much maxed out and it was done to some older standards um, and bringing that up would become problematic. Why does this work? The county, I did not attend the meeting, so this came to me secondhand. The county's access point is um, diminished or impacted by the school uh, site and when school gets out in the morning and in the afternoon. So by upgrading this roadway, the county's access and for its services is going to be enhanced. Uh, and then from my client's perspective, uh, they get the additional residential lots noted, some of which are in a GNC area. So this GNC area is essentially being down zoned. That is the essence of the application. 
to uh, upgrade the county's entrance. Now, um, also pending, we have provided a document to the county attorney's office that basically outlines uh, what the developer will do and what the county will allow the developer to do and what their responsibilities will be post platting and development. So the driveway access is gonna be upgraded to current county standards uh, and you can see the uh, limited additional residential uses with shared drainage. That is the essence of the application. Questions? Does the staff have any questions? No, sir. Oh, uh, need might I? Madam Attorney. I, I, I finally got to looking at that. Um, is that roadway already a dedicated, uh, a platted dedicated roadway? Or? The county's road? No. Yes. And are there supposed to be any improvements that are going to be on county property, or are all the improvements supposed to be on the client's property? They're all on the county's property at my client's expense. Signage? It's addressed in the DA. Is that on your client's property or our property? Your property, I believe. It's right there in the corner. That's not particularly, um, it could go either way. I do, I finally got to that, sorry. Yeah. Well, and since you brought it up, Denise, I, <laughs> I, I got to look at it again last night and I omitted from that document the shared drainage. Oh, uh, um, shame, I know. shame. So I will send you a revised version. So I'll send you back the Word document that I got from Tallahassee. That'll work, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank now, you. when Joe spoke, he triggered my memory. So we're in for preliminary plat. We got a comment back that uh, we have to do cross access between the residential parcel reflected on my client's property and the property to the south. As you know, under the current code, cross access between residential into, into and out of residential is not required. So for the purpose of clarity, we would like the, a PUD's condition to say that uh, cross access will not be required between the uh, with the southerly portion. Now it, it's GNC, so the, your code says between GNC there's cross access. Well, we're not changing the GNC part of this; we're just changing the PUD, and that will resolve any potential conflict between the GNC and the PUD. No cross access, please, to the south with commercial property. There's no place to put it, frankly. Did uh, I confuse everybody with that? <laughs> Does the board have any questions for the applicant? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner I'd like, Sheriff. I'd like you to. Ah, uh, get Sorry. that, thank you. <laughs> I'd like you to amplify, if you will. When you refer to cross ac access, are you talking about the, uh, the, the signal that will be installed at your client's expense would allow you to turn both directions, go north and south? Is that what you're referring to as cross ass? No, access? sir. What I'm talking about, I'm just going to step away here. Don't yell at me, Denise. There's a road somewhere like here going into this commercial piece. And because they're both GNC under the current code, you would require that, and what we're saying to you is we want the PUD conditions to address this issue and uh, so there's no ambiguity, okay, that the PUD will control cross access is not required into residential areas, and this clearly is going to become a residential area. Understood. Thank you. Um, this may be historical, but I was looking into documents. When this, you know, assuming this goes forward and, and gets developed, um, it looked like there was a primary access through West Laurel into the... That's an access point. It's a northern access point. It's a northern access okay, point. If you go back to the master plan. Can we go back one slide now? I'm sorry. No. Yeah, there's, you can see the West Laurel access up there. Yep. So yeah. you will, your client will improve West Laurel and make that a, an access point. 
and that'll be a right in and right out only? Right. Okay. The second would be um, then what we're talking about now with the new light at the county property. I want to clarify. When we submitted this, the intent was to put a light there. I don't think it's going to meet warrant, traffic warrants. You do these studies. And the primary access now for this project is going to be off of State Road 44 through Sterling Commercial, the property to the north, and we're in for signalization there. But I, I don't believe that this entrance road is going to meet what they call traffic warrants for mm -hmm. a signal. Not enough trips, and uh, thank God not, not enough. You know, you got to have so many accidents before you get a light, and it's just not going to get there. I guess the key to my question, and the, the, my point is, you've showed that this is a phase development. So when do these access points get developed in the phasing? Um, well, frankly, in West Laurel will get done first, okay? And then as they develop the southern portion, phases two and three, this access will be developed. And then the Route 44 access is, is last? No. the <laughs> I was trying to speak to local streets. The first phase will include the roadway through Sterling Commercial and the light on 44 and West Laurel, the northern one half of the project, to give it a perspective. Thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Facemeyer. Uh, Mr. Stillwell, when you were here um, with this application previously, um, I seem to recall that uh, this area was going to include um, model homes. Is that still the proposal? Yeah, we're getting a model. Those were at my Laurel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Okay. So just to conclude, this situation, you'll get a better roadway going into and out of the county facilities built by and paid for by the developer. You'll have uh, an access point on County Road 491 that, in fact, meets LDC separation standards where the other one did not, which is a safer situation. Uh, and from the county's perspective, they saw uh, a benefit here because It'll help them get in and out during those peak hour times when the school is uh, doing their morning and afternoon traffic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stillwell. Mr. Mr. Chair, might I before? What's the time frame of planning? Are you? Do you know? Um, PL four twenty came in, and uh, we got a letter back on March eighth which raises cross access issue. We've got to do some traffic information for them, okay, on turning movements, but we're moving forward very quickly. I, I mean the platting of the road, I'm sorry. Well. Are you gonna add, are you, is that road gonna be added to, it's gonna be a separate plat? Well, the document we submitted to these calls for either an easement or a plat, so we'll just have to sort that okay. out. Um, you know, the. It's got to be dedicated, so. Well, uh, what I'm trying to say to you is uh, if you plat it, that means you're going to have to put a cul de sac somewhere on the county properties. And we're, we, if we just do an easement agreement, then you don't have, you still don't have that situation. So. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. This is what goes on after you guys do the master plan <laughs> approval. <laughs> Sorry, I just looked at it last night because I saw this on the agenda, so. Thank you. And I'll Thank get you. The revised out. Now we get the staff to come forward. We get the staff presentation, please. Good morning. Joe Hockadell, Principal Planner with Land Development. This application is requesting to amend a certain portion of the previously approved planning and development. Uh, here you can see the project in its entirety as it was approved. 
the previous modification was for this portion up here, uh, which Mr. Stowell alluded to. So this is the expansion area. It's including that general commercial portion that's along 491. And this is the area that's been modified. They added some residential lots to this area with the new roadway access. So here you can see the land use. And this was the previously approved master plan from PUD 2023-00007. And it shows that they had lots on that southern border and that they had their own access point that came out to 491. And so here's the adjustment that they're requesting. And here you can see both of them kind of next to each other. <coughs> we do have uh, a representative from technical services here if you do have any specific questions to this, but the modification here, they would, they are requesting or proposing to plat the existing county access drive and plat it as an actual roadway to a point, which I believe is just past, it's right about here, which is just past their entrance. So it would be a roadway to that point, and then it would continue to be a county access drive. And for clarification, their sign based on this is right in their corner. So one of the conditions, it's on their property. And so one of the conditions is that that sign would have to be outside of any clear visibility triangle, <coughs> uh, FDOT clear visibility triangle. So there is the requirement for cross access to the south. That was something came up in the in the preliminary plan, which is being reviewed right now. So the increase in residential lots, the impact of that on the density for the overall project is negligible. It really doesn't increase their density calculations. So really staff doesn't have much concern with this uh, as long as the conditions are adhered to. So. Thank you, Joe. Does that we don't have any questions for staff? Does the board have any questions for staff? Mr. Clark. Commissioner Scherer. How many total residential units are now included? I've seen several references that vary from 619 to 757. Microphone. <laughs> You'll have to fix that for me. Um, I've seen references in the number of residential units in the documents from 619 to 757 to 783. Do, you, do we know what the current plan is? I know it's in my staff report somewhere. This isn't a test. I'm not trying to quiz you. I'm just curious. But the 142 acres remains, correct? That's basically the footprint we're talking about. Yeah, the 142 acres actually increased a little bit with the addition of the general commercial portion. Um, and it went from, so the, the basically the change in the number of units is only changing this little portion here and it went from 18 approved to 33. So I Got know that, that would be the total uh, change in residential units for the, the entire PUD. So, Joe, the condition is unchanged, number one. It says uh, 619, but I think we probably need to change that <coughs> number with the additional units. I don't remember if it actually changed on that. It went from 608 to 619. Yeah. yeah, that matrix says 619 for this application. That was and we have 619 in the condition. Yeah, that was the previous number, I think, too, though. So. It's 15 additional. In this area, but I guess they're going to compensate elsewhere because the number didn't change. Mm -hmm. So basically, the increased residential units are in this particular area that are highlighted in, in the ellipse, in the red ellipse on the drawing. Yes. The okay. only change to residential units is in this specific portion. And to answer uh, Commissioner Facemeyer's question uh, previously, the model homes are in this area up here in the corner. Thank you. Any, 
Any other questions for staff? Joe, can I ask you a question? That, uh, that Citrus County property that this access road um, accesses, um, and that would now be proposed to be utilized by the, by the developer, um, what goes on on that in the Citrus County lot there? So this is the Citrus County lot. Honestly, I don't know everything that's in there. I know we have a uh, transit building there. We have some uh, fleet maintenance buildings. I think Fire Rescue has a building in there, um, but I don't know if that's everything. That's just what I know of. So uh, do, you, do you think there's any possibility that the county may want that access road closed from time to time? Uh, which would then affect the ability to access these homes. The the way this is being proposed is the portion from 491 to their roadway, the, the entrance roadway, would be a public right of way, um, and then the portion beyond that would remain county access drive, which could be controlled. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any, any other questions? Thank you, Joe. Now, the public portion of the meeting will now be open. If there's anyone present who would like to speak on this application, please come forward to the podium. As a reminder, individuals have three minutes and organizations have five minutes. When speaking on this application, please address the board. If you have any documentation that you want to be entered into record, Please provide a copy of, to the recording secretary. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Paul Darty. I live at 3481 West King B Street to the south of this project. I have a couple of observations or questions that I think the board should be aware of. I may be wrong in my assumptions, so I'll admit that up front, but I think it's something that needs to be examined. <clears throat> the roadway on the county property that is in question here, I think it needs to be, is that really county property? Because it was my understanding years ago that that is a leased property from an owner and the entire county development there is on leased property. I may be wrong about that. That may have changed in the last 20 years or so. But if it's on leased property and you're trying to make a public right of way out of that, I think you may have some difficulty. So I would observe that. I think perhaps the madam lawyer there could check it out for you and find out what's going on. The other question that I would have or observation is this was originally proposed as a development with a large collector road and the whole purpose of the 10 acre piece that goes out to CR 491 was to provide an access point on the property owned by the applicant. That seems to be leaving the table now. It seems to be that uh, the access point down there will now be on county property or whatever the status of the property is. So I would take that into account making your decisions here today and perhaps you need to explore the actual status of that property in question, the county property as it's called here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak? Good morning. Good morning again. again. Michael G. Serwinski, uh, professional address 2716 South Lacanto Highway. <clears throat> I can see pluses and minus in, in, in this plan, revised plan. Um, obviously, having uh, a shared entrance, not having two right of way entrances, I think is confusing and will be confusing to most. Many of you uh, know my building is right here on the corner. 
So cross access, I, I see a lot of accidents coming out of here, especially when there's bus traffic in the morning. So you've got the biggest accidents occur when people are coming out here and turning left cross traffic because you've got traffic going at 55 miles an hour. Of course, you do have a hill, which is not the situation here. <clears throat> but I really believe that the cross access and the loss of it is imp an important consideration here. Uh, if you look again, madam, if you can, uh, Elizabeth, if you could put up the map that shows the zoning, you've got those commercial properties to the south. If each, if, if each one of those has an uh, entrance and an exit on 491, there's just going to be a lot of confusion. <clears throat> uh, so I, I think retaining the commercial and imploring the, the cross access, the loss of that, especially if in the future, if you've got 619 homes there, uh, I don't doubt, uh, I would question whether or not uh, maybe initially a traffic signal is warranted, but I think at some time in the future, there's probably gonna be a need for a signal there. And if you have lost your cross access, uh, think about some of those implications for the GNC um, to the south there. It's, uh, so I'm neither in favor or against, but I just think there's other considerations involved in the decision. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Okay, seeing none, the public portion of the hearing is now closed and we'll bring the discussion back to the board for any discussions. Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss somebody? I'm sorry, yes sir. Um, just to re refresh everyone's memory, when we did this project, you can see we tied in with uh, Crystal Glen phases so that there was access over to Homosessa Trail County Road 490 over there. So there's access that way. There's access points. The main entrance point will be to uh, through Sterling Commercial on State Road 44 and then the two access points on County Road 491. The uh, client uh, in its proposed development agreement, will pay for the cost of the fencing and uh, security onto the county parcel just to the west of where the uh, access point Mr. Hockendale spoke to. So that's on the client's ticket. Um, if this design were in effect right now, the comment of the county uh, in its plat review about cross access wouldn't be there. The only reason that comment is in there is because we haven't adopted this particular uh, amendment. So, but what I don't want to happen is to adopt this amendment. It's thinking that there will be no cross access because that's what the code says. And then someone says to me, well, the underlying district now is GNC and the PUD uh, doesn't control over the underlying district. And then we get into some what we call internal inconsistencies. So the, that's why we propose that the PUD will control relative to the cross access issue rather than have it being left for, God forbid, legal interpretation. Uh, any other questions? So that was just your rebuttal. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. And Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, I was looking through the report, and apparently I did my, my Inverness math wrong when I was looking at the number of units here. The master plan does have a total of 619 listed on there, but the difference between the previous approval and the total approval would be um, of 15 additional lots, which would have taken the total to 623 total units. So if the master plan says, still says 619 as the total, then they may have to lose some lots in a different portion of the PUD to keep under that, we'll, to keep uh, to that 619 total. We'll adjust the map, Joe. That's the way to handle that. Okay. Just so uh, I, some of you may be aware, the one under these PUD conditions, okay, an administrative amendment, if you're doing less than, I believe, 3%, 
in new, new units, you can do that administratively. So if I'm allowed 100 units and I want to put in three more units, I can do three more units. I write a letter to Mrs. Katu and say, please give me an administrative approval as it meets the code for the, what they call minor deviation, the 3%. So that, that comes into play here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members. And I Thank did you. want to say we do have Bill of the Flame here with technical services if you have questions about the cross-access requirement. That was going to ask you if I can ask him that exact question or if he can explain that to us because I'm a little cloudy on that. Bill of Flame, Citrus County Technical Services, uh, engineering intern. So cross access, currently the parcel where they're showing the retention pond and the cul-de-sac, that's a GNC parcel. In the previous amendment, the PUD 2023-0007 actually has a specific condition calling for cross access to the south. So that's already been approved by the board. Um, as far as them putting residential in that lot, it, that's allowed by code, they can do that, but they're not changing the zoning. And we really don't see the benefit of removing that requirement because the properties of the south might not meet separation necessarily and they could still it, it, we are we haven't got an approved traffic study for this development yet but we're expecting you know improvements to the area that's going to be platted as entrance and there may be a, ter a signal there at some point you know so maybe the properties of the south want to use that signal to get out into 491 and we don't want to remove that uh, ability so we wouldn't be uh, in support of removing that Liz, can you go one more slide where it zooms in on this? Thank you. So you're saying they would be required to have cross access? To the south, yes. Right. Does that need to be made a condition of this approval? Uh, it's already in the previous ordinance to the PUD 2023-0007. It's one of the specific conditions. Yeah. Yes, that, that is in the conditions. If you look at condition 13, uh, which is the technical services conditions. We have the underlines, which is new to this application, and right above those it says, commercial lot nine south of, Le of the Lecanto maintenance complex needs to show cross access to the south. So that is currently a condition as part of this PUD, and it was part of the previous one as well. Any questions for uh, technical support? Come to you, the, you got, sorry. Come to the mic, Mr. Stillwell, please. Cross access location limited strictly to the GNC area? Uh, I would think so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, sir, for clarifying that. Okay, now we'll bring the discussion back to the board. The front, this piece is GNC. And I guess I can start. I'm not in favor for um, making this modification to this PUD. I, I think I didn't see an issue with it before. Um, I see a little complications and a little juggling going on. So I'm not, uh, I would not be in favor. Um, to make this change. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Worthington. Um, I uh, disagree with you on this one. I would be in favor of the modification. Um, I think Mr. Zawinski brought up a very good point about having two driveways right next to one another turning onto a major roadway. It makes more sense to have a shared access point. Um, and also, I was back and forth about cross access, but uh, Mr. Laflame, when he testified that, you know, we would have people that might want to come to the light coming from the south north, that made sense to me. Um, because at first I was thinking, well, if there's going to be a traffic signal there, then, you know, would, would cross access matter? But yes, we could bring people from the south up to the north to the traffic signal and turn safely onto the roadway. So I would be in favor of the application with keeping cross access. I'd say the same thing, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, we've 
this board and my time here in cross access has been one of the most contentious matters that we've ever discussed. Um, in seeing cross access working in other areas that were part of plans that we discussed and then they come to fruition and get built and improved and you see the cross access and actually utilize the cross access personally. Um, I see the benefit of cross access. I, I also think that the uh, plan as approved with the discussion between engineering and the developer makes sense. Um, if engineering is, is for it and they think it's gonna make things easier, we all know traffic in this county is getting to be uh, pretty pretty bad, so anything that we can do to limit the amount of trips on the road while still allowing for all this amazing development to happen, I'd be in favor of it. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Facemeyer. Um, I do plan to support this application. Um, however, I recognize that it does present some challenges. Uh, I'm really not crazy about um, the shared access with the existing county right away, uh, but I am very confident that uh, our county council and our county engineering department can come to a uh, mutual uh, agreement with the applicant to make that a safe ingress and egress. Um, I, do, I do like the also the cross access component as well, so I, I, I will be supporting this. Thank you, Commissioner Facemeyer. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, is, I mean, Joe, am I correct in assuming that this whole interchange or intersection uh, is dependent upon uh, Florida Highway Department of Transportation approval of traffic counts? Did I read that in the engine? In the, in the yeah, engine? that's, uh, I don't know if I can answer that. That would be a really more of a question for technical services, but this is a county roadway, not a state roadway. I think I heard the light is contingent upon it being warranted, which would require a warrant study. All right, uh, I was thinking of the whole thing. All right, thank you. I, I, I actually, not to interrupt, but I actually, I actually believe this uh, entrance will get more traffic than one might think. Because when 44 becomes even more congested than it is today, I'm going out the back door and this is the back door. Any, any other comments for a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, for the purpose of a motion. Commissioner Bramlett. The Planning and Development Commission finds application number PUD 2023-00014 consistent with the Citrus County Comprehensive Plan and the Citrus County Land Development Code and that this board recommends approval with the conditions as they are stated of the application to the Board of County Commissioners based upon the evidence and testimony presented and the staff report and conclusions regarding this petition. Second. So we have a first by Commissioner Bramlett, and a second by Commissioner Worthington. Any other discussion by the board? All in favor say yay. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. 6-1. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I might, I did have an opportunity to review the deeds and uh, the county came into possession of that property in 1983 from, um, by deed, so it's not leased. It's on. Thank you. All right, now it's time for CPA-24-0002. Uh, the board has asked for a five minute recess.
least fifteen thousand dollars. Is that is that just for the? Uh, they auto renew. Now we are ready for CPA-2024-00002. All right, this is the uh, somewhat long-awaited uh, amendment to the comp plan for the Cardinal Interchange Management Area. Um, the back Court of County Commissioners did adopt this um, back in 2021, and um, while having some very interesting language in it. It was awfully hard to apply it. Pleasure. Yeah, We have um, Cardinal Farms application specifically is gonna come before you in a few months. They're waiting on this outcome too. Um, and it was really hard to apply. There's a lot of standards in there that are subjective and non-objective, um, some of which I'm not even sure what they mean. I've also had some comments from various people, members of this board, members of com some of the commissioners and citizens on some of the some of the big, big picture that was in the Cardinal IMA that may not have reflected what was uh, what is best for the county. So I'm gonna go through some of the highlights here. I did include a strike through underline in here. It's it's a disaster because I had to reformat everything. So a lot hard a lot easier to read on the written clean version. But just to go into this, um, this is the Cardinal Interchange IMA map. This is not proposed to change. There is absolutely no change to this. So um, if you're in the IMA now, you would remain in the IMA. This is not a map amendment in any way. So what the maps do, do have is an economic development target area, which is directly adjacent to the on-off ramps. So right now, mixed use is not required. There's an emphasis on light industrial. Those are all great things. As a 10-acre minimum project size, I do want to talk about with that talk about that with you. Um, that's a lot. I understand the intent was uh, well. I wasn't here when this was adopted, but I think the intent was trying to make sure we don't have the piecemeal commercial. Understand, 10 acres is a lot. Um, just for reference, State Route 44 is five acres um, and actually reducible down to three. So that's one thing I want to talk about, but not yet because I haven't talked about the other area too. 
So outside that direct on, on off ramp area is a 20 acre minimum. I, I do think as, as a planner that's quite obsessive. Um, Cardinal Farms, this is not an amendment to deal with Cardinal Farms. They just happen to point out all the problems here. They're way above this. This is not an issue for them. I think 20 acres minimum is quite excessive outside of the EDTA. I'm a little questioned about the 10 acre right in the EDTA. Um, proposing um, to possibly change that to five acres or even reducible to three acres. But I want to get the, your input on that, please. This is a staff initiated amendment, so it's not a quasi-judicial that we normally have the applicant, I'm the applicant. So, so Anna, do you want to stop, go, and have a discussion in between? I do. I want to talk about the project size right away, if we could, please. So um, I looked up uh, all of the lots. If you go back to the map, if you look up different lot sizes and things surrounding the interchange, you find that a lot of the acreages, 2.28, 2.24, some improved, some vacant. Um, there are others that are one acres. So what I'm basically saying is even in the EDTA, most of the development will require aggregation. So now with an improved lot, is that going to be possible? And what's the time frame? So I think that a lot of the concepts and ideas that they had when they formed this, while I disagree with taking someone's current zoning and changing it on them um, after it's already in place, but that's what the county commission decided to do. Um, but their forward thinking was great uh, uh, as far as how that could develop, but I just don't think it's ever going to be possible without a lot of time and aggr aggregation. So. What are we trying to do? Are we trying? I mean, if you, if your goal is to leave Cardinal almost exactly the way it is, this plan works beautifully. At ten acres and twenty acre minimum. I totally agree with you on that. Um, that that uh, the aggregation in, in the state route forty four, and I'm going to rely on that quite a bit because that IMA has already been adopted for the comp plan, and I think it had a lot of good ideas that the consultant wrote. Um, they allow aggregation across local roads but they thought five acres was perfectly fine after some discussion. And those lots are, um, you're right, out here some of the lots are big. There's, there's some five acre, there's a lot of one and two acre um, lots. I agree it's gonna be very hard for people to get together the 10 acres and the 20 acres. And I think um, the, the concern about piecemeal, it's an IMA, we're gonna have commercial, commercial, commercial. So um, I, I kind of agree we need to step down that 20 and 10 acres. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I would just echo what Miss Worthington said. I remember when this came in front of us, I hated the plan. I told the <laughs> entire room there was a whole bunch of people here from Cardinal Lane, and I told them that if they did not want this Cardinal Interchange to develop, that they should support this plan because the 10 and the 20 acres, it's it, as a real estate agent trying to get that many people to cobble together and get them all to agree, it's, it's nearly impossible. It would take an act of Congress which we all know how that works. So uh, I, I kind of like the way that it was wrapped around or um, we're talking about interpreting it like we do the 44 interchange. I feel like that makes a lot more sense. Uh, three and five acres is still a pretty large parcel. They can do a lot of different things on there. You can get a nice little development agreement together. Wouldn't have to get as many property owners together to agree. Some of the properties out there are already of that size. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to question, and I'll maybe wait until we get there, is just some of the prohibited uses. Okay, yeah, I didn't have that on my slides, but absolutely we'll talk about that too. So what kind of acreage are we talking about here? Like I said, um, 44 is five acres reducible to three with land development code standards, which they're still writing and we still have to adopt. Um, what do you want here right now? With It's 20 and 18 and 10, um, 10 directly, 18 and 20 outside. So. What, what would you, what's your preference? May I, um, Mr. Chairman? And we'll open to this public, I'm sorry, we'll open to the public and get their comment too. We're not adopting here, these are just talks right now. But it was my understanding that the whole intent of this thing is to develop a, a small, you know, walking, uh, living in where you work uh, type community, something like Gulf Shores or something along that line, uh, architecturally similar uh, features. Um, and if you allow three acres, five acres, you got the same thing that the rest of the county has. So, I mean, what's the purpose of this if it's not to develop 
that kind of a little community within a community. And to do that, I mean, you need 20 or 30 acres to just bulldoze down what's there and start over again. I mean, that's, mm. I, I don't know what the purpose of the, uh, of the interchange management area is if it's not to create this little Disneyland uh, community. Right. Um, for Cardinal, I, I think the, I, I can't speak for what the intent actually was. M what I'm getting out of it was we wanted obviously knew this was going to be a commercial corridor. We knew there was going to bring traffic here. It was going to bring people. So we wanted to have some control over the development. Um, there's not there's not sidewalks on Cardinal. There's not any plans to put in sidewalks on Cardinal. So there should be. I, I agreed, <laughs> uh, and, and we heard quite a bit about that. Plus bus stops and et cetera from the residents. Totally agree with you. But there's not any plans at this time. So I think making it a walkable community, although. Point taken, the idea was to try to make individual pods of areas where they were, you can live and work, live and work, play, live, work, play areas. And I, I think that's what they were trying to model after one, specifically in Gainesville. Um, and, and we can still propose that. Um, that was the 10 acre, 20 acre minimum idea. 44 has been mentioned a couple of times, and I, I thought that we're trying not to replicate 44. We're, there, it's completely different. There are differences, but some of the some of the standards in there I did grab. Definitely not a cookie cutter. It's not copy and paste. But the idea of having five acre minimums is is a reference. It, it's something to think about. They're still going to have the same development. Forty four is almost built out, so it's kind of hard to compare. But I thought that some of the standards in there, especially the trigger standards and when these come into play, and and perhaps the acreage were good models. Joanna, I have had some people say to me, you know, you said you just said that it is different at each um, interchange management area. Is that a good idea? I mean, do we want people coming into Citrus County and going, well, you got to do this over here, you got to do that over here. This is, you know, all this cookie cutter type development rules and regulations, or should we have just some sort of IMA standard? Or, you know, why are we doing this different here, different there, everywhere? Is we did it different because they're so different from each other. Cardinal is very rural, farms, nothing. Um, today. For, yeah, today. 44 is already almost developed. 486, um, of course, you know what's happening with the 486, but that's actually all outside the IMA. And there's not a lot there other than, you know, LKQ. So um, that's why they were, they were looked at differently. I, I agree with you. That's, I think some of the standards can be the same, but there are going to be specifics that are going to have to pertain to that area. What kind of infrastructure they have out there? They're, they're laying pipes, so that's sewer? They're doing water and sewer in the area, yes. That, yeah. it, that is running up and down. Um, it, when we started talking to Cardinal Farms, we were way ahead of them on the sewer lines, and the, I hope it's sewer, not water. I might be mixing them up, and now we're there. We're, gonna, we're ahead of them now. So they're going to be in place. Cardinal Farms doesn't have to develop it themselves because they're going to have the central utilities already there. So they're, they're, they're laying the utility lines down very actively down Cardinal. So Joanna, as, as I read this, and, and again, coming new, I don't have some of the historical background, but it looked like it was, you know, it was a document that was trying to play both offense and defense. <laughs> um, you know, offense from the standpoint of what do we want here, what do we want this specific area to look like to um, Commissioner Worthington, how do you want to cross-apply that to other areas? Is this going to be a one-off or is this going to be a template that you would apply to other areas? And then on defense, what don't you want? Um, and I've heard a lot of reference, you know, being a resident and reading the newspaper and just knowing what these, you know, what these interchanges get to look like in other areas. What do you want to avoid? So what is the, what's your primary objective here? Is it offense to define what you really want <laughs> never, to see? Never do offense. No, I understand your point. I think maybe it might be better if we, if we branch into another topic and come back to this because they are they do all come into each other. So another topic I wanted to talk about is the mixed use idea. So outside of the, of the direct on off ramps, mixed use is required. Um, it has to be you have to have one residential and you can only have single family up to 50%. Um, that has been a problem with Cardinal Farms. They wanted to do more houses and they, they couldn't because of the standard. The mixed use idea is again going back to what Mr. Stone is talking about. It's a live, work, play pod area. Um, do you want that, or do, or does it have to be mandatory? Yes, it's mandatory right now. And is that is that what we really want here? Is to force them into any commercial? And you've heard from the Builders Association already on that. It's not the same developers that usually do residential and commercial. So do we want to force them to always have both? 
or do we want to allow both? Now, you guys are going to see these. These are going to be PUDs that come in, but do you have to mandatory, because this is a comp plan, you can't get a variance or a, a PUD deviation. As a comp plan, you, do you want to require and mandate always residential with any commercial? Well, Joanna, when, when I was talking about this with a builder, um, you know, talking about the mandatories and, and these things, and they said, that's no problem, a hospital's gonna come out and develop that, you know? So when you think about a hospital, um, an ALF, or some sort of complex like that, but what we're thinking about is who is gonna be the end user here? You know, it's gonna have to be somebody huge or, you know, to, to, to do something like this, or who already is established in this type of development. Agreed. It's not going to be common. It's not going to happen right away. So right. that's why I say if you want Cardinal to remain the way it is, leave this in place. But it, it, what do you want? Do you want it to develop or do you want it to – that's right. the question. Agreed. The, you know, Target's doing Target, for example. They're not doing the, – there are residential homes around them, but that's not Target, and they're not building them. They want the workers, but they usually aren't coming in to do the residential and the commercial at the same time. And we're getting inquiries on both, but the shared, the, the mandatory shared mixed use requirement is definitely a concern. It's hard for people to meet. Plus, to no more than 50% single family, not a lot of people are doing multifamily, even though we know we have a need. Single family is definitely right now in the market. As you drive down the Sun Coast down towards Tampa and you see some of these new commercial um, bulk distribution centers and communities, do you envision, do you, do you have an example of what is in your mind's eye as you prepare this? Wow. Um, uh, we, we are always saying whatever is Pasco, we don't want Pasco. But if you look at Pasco, um, they have some rural interchange areas, and they have some residential interchange areas, and they have some commercial. And you don't really see the, the, the right there at all, the combination. So I, I think the mixed-use requirement is ideal, but I think, again, I don't think it's practical. I don't think we're going to get developers wanting to do this. And I think, I agree with Ms. Worthington, I think it's pushing people away. And uh, granted, you know, we have a lot of growth, but I don't think we're trying to say no growth. And I think that might be what this is doing here. Uh, Joanna, mm -hmm. um, as, as Kurt um, called these uh, proposed, what, what we have on the books today, a Disneyland type of proposal. I mean, I know that's right. not true, but um, typically do they, do, do they happen or do they occur because of legislation ordinances or do they happen because a developer sees it as the right place at the right time? I think the second one, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, uh, the one in Gainesville that this is modeled after is the, the one on 75 where you have the Bass Pro Shops and the um, Spurrier restaurant, and I can't remember the name of it now. Um, a lot of things in there, and you have some apartments. So that developer came in and did that. Did he do that because of legislation? I'm not aware of that. I think he just did it. And, and although it'd be great to have that developer come down here and do the same, it's not that likely at this time. I mean, Cardinal Farms is about as close as we're going to get, and they're really interested in the residential and reserving the commercial because they don't have that, those buyers right now. They're, they're residential. Actually, Joanna, does this even make sense? Because in a lot of um, the language of this, it was talking about reducing sprawl. And then you talk about um, allowing mixed use both vertically and horizontally. So to me, I'm like, why would you want to do horizontally if you're trying to reduce sprawl? And then putting all this single family, is this detached or is it attached or doesn't say? You know, like, so is it really actually reducing sprawl anyway if this is the rule? Yeah, I agree. And, and Ms. Lynn, I apologize. I'm putting you on the spot for a second, but I probably shouldn't be getting actual decisions until we open to the public, and then we'll talk about actual um, consensus at this point. I wouldn't do consensus yeah. yet. I mean, you're hearing right. my thoughts. So we're just talking, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, any more on this particular mixed use idea? I came, from, came here from Jupiter, and Within Jupiter and its adjoining community, there are, there are several examples that I was trying to draw to as I read this. Uh, one happens to be by the name of Abacoa, and that's where it is a minor league ballpark. Mm. You know, they have spring training. Boy, I wish we had that. But. And yeah, well, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> so into baseball. But it was, it was interesting to watch the one community suffer. It, it really mm. hasn't taken off the way they oh. wanted because it, it just doesn't have the ability, you know, for 
it doesn't have the panache for people to come into that community, even though the ballpark is there. Right, they're coming, um, and, coming and leaving then. Yeah, yeah they come okay. and leave. And then across the, the road in the next community, they they tried, to, or they not only tried, but they appeared to be very successful in this multi-use with some big box, with some you know other supporting retail, with uh, both vertical and horizontal um, type of community, and including anchored, I don't know if it was intended, but it's now going to be anchored by a new hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, those are ideal types of communities, but it takes a population growth to spur that on. So the other question would be is what is the time frame or time window here? Right. I mean, the parkway is open, so it's open, open for whoever wants to come in. And we have some developers waiting and watching on this, but I don't think we have anybody that's coming in to, you know, other than Cardinal Farms to do the big, big development. So good point. Um, The third point in the bullet on this slide is also another point of discussion is acreage. Right now there is a minimum density. We don't have minimum densities anywhere in the county except for here. Six dwelling units an acre. Um, Some places that's a lot. Certainly on Cardinal Cardinal area that's huge because that's one unit per 10 acres or those existing smaller lots that are already there. And you can go up to 20. Now what staff is proposing is um, you can do six. It's the max, and if you want more, you can go up to 20, but you have to meet certain standards. And that, again, was modeled after some of the language in State Route 44. The minimum acreage in in this more rural area is a concern um, just because we don't have it anywhere in the county. Um, And not just that, but it's, it's a lot. So that's something I want to discuss, too, is what the minimum acreage... The maximum of 20 is elsewhere in the county, too. 20 is our high-density residential area. Sure, you can meet that if you have certain standards to do it. And some of the some of the people can pull it off. And you've seen some in the 10 to 15 range lately with the multifamily. I um, also wanted to discuss the uh, fact of what triggers the CMU district. So I was here before the early discussions of Cardinal, long before we were just talking and getting input from citizens. And one of the big things they talked about at that time was, let us stay here. Let us continue our farm or continue our house and leave us alone. Okay. So that was what was intended. What actually got adopted is any lot or parcel created triggers you're in the CMU district now and you have to meet these standards. So what that means right now is that if you move a lot line over five feet because it's your shed's in the way, You've triggered the CMU district. That was not the intent, at least then. I don't think it was at all here. So the applicable triggers were changed to, again, reflect some of the standards of State Route 44, where if you have a certain large large improvement for commercial or you have a complete change of use, you tear down the house and you want to put a store in, absolutely that triggers it. So those kind of triggers, but not a five-foot lot line where it's residential and residential. So that's one thing that staff changed. Um, Also the max floor area ratio, um, 1.0, but mixed use can go up to 1.5. Ms. Worthington talked a little bit about the um, horizontal and vertical integration. 1.5 is not allowed anywhere else in the county. Um, A 1.5 floor area ratio means that you can have um, one and a half times the size of the lot in gross floor area. Um, Basically the multi-story, obviously. not, not saying that's not okay, but we don't have that anywhere else. This is pretty intense. So how do you feel about the 1.5 floor area ratio? I think that might be it. Yeah, that was it. So a lot of tough <coughs> stuff to talk about. Um, we can open it to public. Mr. Bramlett mentioned talking about some of the uses. Um, you'll see I did change some of the uses, mostly because I couldn't really define them. Um, some of the language was a bit confusing as to what exactly that term means. But um, absolutely open to anything else that's in here. I think these were the big changes. I just want to make a comment about the uh, floor area ratio while it's on the top of my head. Uh, You hit the nail on the head earlier when you said that Pasco County has some commercial uh, interchange areas and they have some residential Mm -hmm. interchange areas. Mm -hmm. When this particular project or the IMA came in front of us and the Tioga Town Center was thrown out there, I thought it was ridiculous. I, I'm on record saying that multiple, multiple times. This this just needs to be a mostly residential exchange area. Put some commercial in there, make it make some opportunities, but leave it leave it mostly just residential. The the floor area ratio that's too much. It's just too much. And people out there in that particular area they don't want they don't want to see that out there. So I that's, I I just wanted to put that on the record for the floor area. Any other comments for it? 
I just, about the personal, I mean, about the uses, um, I did see that personal services was scratched out, and I wasn't sure why that was. Like, what if someone went in a nail salon or something like that, if we're having a ton of residential? I don't know what if that's personal services, but, like, I didn't know why that was eliminated. Yeah, let me find that particular area. I cringe at that. It's on page 305. Thank you. Look at this. We have these page numbers now where I can find stuff. Um, yeah, personal services was scratched out because it's covered, it's covered, covered under general commercial. Personal services is one that's in our land use table we're taking out because I can't really define that. Um, but it's it, a number three general commercial is a personal, a personal service like a, a nail salon would fall under that already. So it's already here. It's one of those topic things we're trying to take out of our land use tables because I can't define that. And I, I just would like to also go on the record saying I always thought that this was a terrible plan for the <laughs> Cardinal Interchange Management area. I uh, spoke against it before I was on this board, and now I'd, I still want to be vocal about it. I think it is it is a great concept that maybe has to happen naturally, um, but I think all of these mandatories and um, minimums, especially minimum density, I agree with Mr. Bramlin about the, um, the FAR. Um, I just don't think this works for this area. I'm, I've lived in this community for a long time, and I never thought that Cardinal was an ideal place for this plan. Well, since you brought that up, I, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and while, while I, I probably voted for most or all of what was presented to us at the time, I always felt that we were putting a square peg in a round hole. Uh, just uh, exactly. It was a, it was someone's vision. I wasn't sure who's. They're I, gone. I don't understand why they ever picked Cardinals and Interchange. It's, it's, <laughs> it's about a three mile long Didn't road. Didn't have any two chase, no on say in that one. Nothing there but farms. Yeah, well, the commission didn't do that. That would be I know top, that. But, but, yeah. Uh, it's here, it's now, but I, agree, I don't disagree with you. That's why some of the, um, for example, the density I think should come down, the mixed use requirement mandate, um, staff's opinion that should come down, the FAR should come down. Um, the trigger should definitely be changed. So I'm pointing out some of the things that I, I, I think we should take care of. I have one more question, if mm -hmm. I can. So does the sale trigger, like say someone, like say I sell a house that I own out there to my sister or I sell it to who, whoever, but they want to keep it as a residence. Can they keep it as a residence, or does that trigger? It does not trigger. Okay. Um, the triggers are, are um, on page 310, newly proposed for non-residential use or mixed use, um, expiration of an existing non-res development that exceeds 25% of the gross leasable area, or a change in occupancy type as defined by the Florida Building Code that requires additional parking. So that was key, too. We didn't want to have you, you know, you became a... Uh, a pizza restaurant, and now you're going to be a donut restaurant or occupancy uh, a accounting office. It doesn't require more parking. Why should they suddenly have to meet different standards? Um, there's not really a lot out here right now, though. Or expansion of an existing residential development that exceeds the number of legally permitted dwelling units. So if uh, apartment complex has 25 and they now want to do 30. But no, absolutely. The idea was, like I said early on, is to let the people in, in the Cardinal area stay and live and give their land to their kids forever and ever if they want to do that. But right now, it says any lot or parcel created triggers it. So uh, although tearing down and moving in again wouldn't, like I said, that lot line adjustment would. And I, that certainly was not what was intended. You know, if you go back to, and I hate to beat it, <clears throat> the defense offense concept. I'm, I'm fully supportive of saying what we as a what we as a community don't want to see happen to Cardinal, mm. um, and I think that's important. And I can't don't think you can necessarily force fit what you do want to see, but I think it's going to happen naturally. It'll happen organically, and how someone how some entity values that location is going to be largely driven by how the population growth you know changes and and what's around it. Um, I think. I hate to say this because I'm a, I'm a pro-business person, but you want to preserve the type of community you want to see mm -hmm. so that it's not overrun by the things you don't want and then allow those others to happen organically, but give them the right opportunity in terms of you know, the floor areas, the density, and the others. Agreed. And, and, and there is a demand for residential development regardless here. We, we, we're fooling ourselves if we think we're not going to be a bedroom community where Tampa with the parkway here. We already are. Sugarman Woods is heavy that way, and, and 
but we have to do it right. Agreed. We, we're the nature coast. So we want to stay the nature coast. So uh, that's why I can't really identify offense or defense. I think we're kind of doing both. But um, the mixed juice mandatory is certainly a concern that uh, is, is going to stop cardinal development. I agree on that. Anything else before we? Good, good, good comments. I appreciate this. This is what we're looking for. Um, I wasn't going to address it, but uh, Mr. Bramlett talked about changes. Did you want to talk about that now? That's fine. I just wanted to talk about the one that talked about in the CMU where it said no uh, auto repair. Give me a page can number. You, can you clarify that? I'm sorry. I need a page number. 306. Um, Thank 306. you. Yeah, it's the 1715-9. Truck stops, prohibited uses, truck stops, okay. So it was truck stops for vehicle repair and it was truck stops that include vehicle repair. It's just a minor change on that. Um, that was something that was in there, in there already. They did not want um, something like the shops in Wildwood right before the, the, turn, the 75 where you have the chrome shops and the, and the truck stops that was specifically talked to us about with some citizens. So does that exclude any auto repair? I mean, this is a traveled highway. It's going to be an evacuation route. Don't we think that it no. makes sense to have some auto repair? Agreed. And this is truck stops. So those would not be truck stops. They, if it's a truck stop for truck repair, yes. If they're going to do the repair there, if it's a truck stop, no. Now, again, this is... Um, yeah, so you could absolutely have general commercial uses. Okay, this so that falls under truck stops. Seventeen three five sixteen number three. Yes, general, the commercial. general commercial. Right, absolutely not trying to prohibit that. And in fact, right up at the parkway, we're kind of cons you know actually wanting that travel centers with fuel, et cetera. But if you want to do the general commercial, it's all general commercial uses. So. I think I think the word vehicle repair in there sort of throws it a little bit. That's kind of. Any kind of vehicle. Agreed. So if we're should talking about truck, truck stops, repair. it should be large truck repair. Then yeah, truck stops that include truck repair is very clear. Thank you. Any other things on the uses? And removing the parkway-related uses. I don't know what that means, really, but we already have travel centers with fuel, hotels, travel accommodations. So um, I think that's a little too broad. That's why that was eliminated. Also took out the words and civic for um, allowable uses. Not exactly sure how to define that. Um, so, and the same with personal services, like I talked about. I did take out hotel and travel accommodations as allowed because they already are in the general commercial. It was just redundant. Would civic be like YMCA, Boys and Girls Club? American that would be Legion. The, th those would be the institutional. So it already it's institutional and civic. So I'm not. Yeah, institutional is defined well in our code. Civic's not there. And we did change modify uses with outdoor storage as prohibited instead of the uses requiring outdoor storage. I don't know what would require an outdoor storage, but um, you know this board with puds with outdoor storage probably don't want those here. RV part, RV storage outside, boat storage outside, not really the place for it. Anything else? You guys are good. You're on top of your game today. Thank you. All good? Uh, thank you. And we're going to open the floor for the public, correct? Yes. Madam Attorney, right? All right, so the public portion of the meeting will be now open. If there's anyone present that would like to speak on this application, please come forward to the podium. As always, a reminder. Individuals have three minutes and organizations have five minutes when speaking on this application. Please address the board. If you have any documentation that you want to enter into record, please provide a copy to the recording secretary. Good, Good morning. morning. My name is Avis Marie Craig, planning consultant, and I am here um, at the express request of a client that is an out-of-state owner within the IMA and they have asked that I read something into the record for you. This is from the Cardinal Farms Group, LLC. They are the largest single property within the IMA. <clears throat> we would first like to thank the Citrus County Planning staff for their cooperation through multiple leadership changes and evolving vision um, for this interchange management area. As stakeholders, 
and participants in the future development of the IMA, we are looking forward to having a clear path to project design and implementation with the proposed changes to the comprehensive plan. However, we have struggled to prepare a land use application that complies with the current density requirements and meets the requirements for compatibility. The current and proposed changes to the comprehensive plan, now granted, um, I'm not sure if what the latest iteration of the document that you've just been discussing, that, that they have the latest and greatest, so. They do. They do. Thank you, Joanne, I appreciate that. Um, anyway, um, and you may be aware that they have actually um, started the process of their application and they have been waiting very patiently for years to proceed. So um, that being said, let me continue with, with their comments. Um, for compatibility surrounding land uses, requiring a minimum density of six units per acre and a maximum of 50% single family homes. These two conflicting requirements for compatibility and many medium um, densities are incompatible um, and so we, that's where their challenge came from. We recognize the intent and desire to maintain the current landscape and character of the county and agree those things should be protected. But we need to be mindful um, of the challenges of trying to meet uh, provisions that are potentially incompatible. So <clears throat> we've witnessed a large uh, number of county planning managers struggle with these two opposing requirements. The only thing that we would say is that we believe that there should be um, an appropriate enhancement um, buffer provision and the plan that you will see down the road um, attempts to provide for that, recognizing the character of the greater area. So that being said, um, from a planning standpoint, we appreciate um, you allowing us to share uh, the comments since we will be among the first to apply under the, the new criteria. Thank you. Thank you. Before you start my time, Mike Serwinski, 2716 South Lacanter Highway, I'd like to recognize Avis. For those of you that do not know Avis, she is an American Society of Planners. She worked on Citrus County's original comp plan in the 80s. We worked together for 12 years to 15 years at Henniger and Ray on over 120 different comprehensive plans in the state of Florida and, and Washington State as well. Um, and uh, she's a long staple here and has uh, Citrus County uh, citizens at heart here. Um, for those of you who didn't know. Thank, Thank you. you. Again, I'm Mike Sarwinski, Professional Address 2716 South Lacanto Highway. I'm an environmental consultant and a resident here since 1986. Uh, I'm glad you guys are working through the kinks on this. It's a tough one. I, I, I want to remind you where we started. This is all started because we want to make sure that we don't have spot zoning which is willy-nilly commercial one acre. And the only way we thought to go through that was create a standard that's almost unachievable except for the large properties. Uh, Mr. Bramblett, you were right. It's tough to take two, two, four, six, five acre parcels or 2.8 acre parcels and aggregate them. It's, it's almost impossible. Now that there's water and sewer there, that's a little bit more of an incentive. But I think what might happen is it might be an incentive to buy some of the, for developers to come in and buy those existing commercial spot zones that are already out there and aggregate on that. So what we're doing or what our intent, I think, was is to create something that's not going to continue to look like spot commercial zoning. 
I agree wholeheartedly. Our, our intent here is let's keep it as rural as possible and let's make sure that we're not heading along the path of, of spot zoning. Uh, I don't have any recommendations for you. Um, I, I, there are no, other than the farms, there are no large parcels there that I'm aware of. So what we're doing is creating an unachievable standard or one that we can't see down the road in 50 years what's gonna happen. One that, hey, you have to achieve this, otherwise it's gonna be, it's gonna remain rural residential. And I think that was our intent there. I don't know why they put an interchange at Cardinal and, and because it's a dead end, why they didn't put it at Grover Cleveland, except that their initial spacing arrangements were, they knew they were gonna put it at 44. Uh, Grover Cleveland was too close at this time. And then there's parkways in New Hampshire that are totally rural, except for your immediate interchange. When you get off that highway, it's still rural. And those are, those are a pleasure to get on and off of and to drive. And I think we need to maintain that rural character no matter what we have to do. If we're creating a standard that's almost unachievable, that sets a high bar, that kind of does it, but it does it with a, um, a slap on the hand or a, instead of a, an incentive, I guess you'd say. So continue on. I think you're headed in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? No one? All right, see you now. Close the public portion of the hearing. Mr. Chair, if we can just kind of go go through the pages, if that's all right. We yes, start on page 305, please. So 305 is the first uh, strike through underline. And on the objective, um, and proposing to change that uh, outside of the EDTA, mixed use development um, with a minimum of two land uses, taking that out and saying mixed use development is encouraged um, instead of required. Do I have any comments on that? Agree. Anyone else? I, I agree. I think you should be as severe as possible with <laughs> okay. this. Okay, so if, I have two, two agrees and two and one not agree. If, okay. you're, if you're going to get what you want, then, then you got to say tough. It's not development like every place else. It's really a special. Or just get rid of the thing and just put a laundry list of prohibited uh, uh, activities and, uh, and businesses and, and, and just leave it alone. Okay, so I've got three people. Anything else? We want it, we don't want I just it. nodded my head, but I'm in agreement. You're in agreement? Okay. So I'm in more, agreement. More agreements than one and one in, in a disagree. Got it. All right. So the first policy is um, basically just changing format. Um, added hotels and travel accommodations along with the allowable right on the off-ramps. Um, I think that's probably where they belong, is right next to the parkway. Um, outside of that, um, took out hotel and travel accommodations because it's already there. It's in general commercial and took out personal services again because it, I don't know how to define that. Stop me if you have comments, okay? Um, I got a quick question. Yes. So right there at the interchange area mm -hmm. in this zone, when you say light manufacturing or light industrial and manufacturing, give me a couple examples. We actually have light industrial um, zoning district in our code with specific uses. So I think we default to that. So that would mean, um, gosh, Joe, help me out. Um, it's not manufacturing, but it is um, like a carpentry store or a countertop, the people that do the granite countertops. Help me out on light industrial versus industrial. Really more like not a concrete plant. Um, yeah, so it'd be more like... Um a small business who's fabricating a component to a piece as to as opposed to maybe a larger pl uh, business creating like or, Cybex, or TCG. building washing machines Cybex and TCG like are good examples of light industrial yes Would that be like Tibbetts lumber yes uh, that gets allowed in light yeah depending yeah, um, making the doors, yeah but making the doors they have the outside storage, so yes. I don't, that would probably fall under the uses with outside storage. Yeah. But that um, would be, this is right adjacent to the on and off ramps, but it's not outside. Their door fabrication would probably be considered like a light industrial. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Can I ask a question with uh, hotels 
and travel accommodations. So conceivably, we could see six and seven story hotels at the interchange like we do at other it depends on what cities. we vote on with the floor area ratio that's where that comes into play so when we get the floor area ratio we'll talk about it if it's a six-story hotel it's going to have to be a really really big parcel which i don't think they're likely to get but we can talk about that and we can put in height limits they're not here now but we can do that it's up to you at this point okay we'll get there so on to page 306 um so we have the minimum acreage so right now it says 10 acres um, within the EDTA, which is right next to the parkway. How do you feel about the 10 acres minimums? Uh, I would like to say that the Builders Alliance did ask me to convey that they supported minimums at five acres. I'm sure they would support three also. <laughs> reducible, you know the, the, the language of reducible to three with certain standards, which we haven't yet adopted, that's what 44 has. So this is right next to the parkway. Um, I think it's important outside of the parkway as well, where it's even bigger. But right now, right next to the parkway, the on-off ramps, um, it says 10, but is there a consensus on five? And then perhaps reducible to three outside of it? That is um, similar to what we have at 44. Right. That's so, so you would have small gas stations. You'd have a gas station on every corner? Three acres well, these are PUDs, acres. so these are unified plans, but um, if the board approved gas station on every corner, yes, but um, they still have to be five acres, which is not usual for a gas station. They're usually quite a bit less than that. You heard the guy with the one acre for three uses earlier today. We have three uh, car washes on the corner of 486 and 491 now. There's still one corner open. We don't have three car washes. It looks like 7-Eleven is putting in a car wash right next to it. <laughs> it's not their primary. Okay, I guess you can count that one. Yeah, um, yeah car, car washes are car washes. Car washes are not general commercial uses anymore, so they wouldn't be allowed here. Now, the light industrial, perhaps. The only thing we have more of than car washes is orange barrels, and we've had them for years. Is what? Orange barrels on the roadways, oh. lining all the roadways in this, this county. Not, not a land use, not yeah. a zoning issue. Well, all right, I so with, I agree with the five acres. Five as acres well. for a few of you, okay, and reduce. We'll talk about the reducible outside of it. All right, um, parcels may be aggregated across local streets, so that's where they get in the. If it's two and a half acres, they might have to combine a few to get the five. Joanne, I have a question about mm -hmm. that. How, how do you foresee, like, do you foresee a lot of PUDs coming for us and, like, we have this designed area right now and, and all of these aggregations that could go out, will they go outside of that design IMA and then we could be expanding it or it would only be in that box? Right. For the use, it would only be in that box. Just outside the IMA is all rural residential or agriculture, so they couldn't use those for commercial at all. They'd have to come through a land use change and get approval to expand the IMA. They couldn't even do parking over there. They could do drainage, stormwater, that's it. Okay. Okay, so um, let's see, going down to the next page, yay. All right, so page 307, within the um, mixed use area, minimum project size is uh, 20 acres. Um, I think that's really excessive. Um, here is where I would do the five reducible to three, frankly, with the 44 language because it's outside of it. Um, it's up to y'all. Right now, 20. I could find only um, like a couple parcels, one that was almost 20 acres, and that was agricultural. And I would not want to see that changed because we, we really need to keep growing our food here. And then there was another that was vacant. I mean, there's not a lot of parcels out there, so again, it would be aggregation to try to get to this minimum standard. I um, agree with your recommendation. Is there anyone else? The five, perhaps, down to three? Now, you're going to see these again in the Land Development Code, and we'll think about the standards there, but this is for the comp plan. I agree. I agree. Okay, got a few for that. Talk about the aggregation again. You can do it across local streets. Um, we do still say you can mix them horizontally and vertically. I don't know why we take that out. Excuse um, me. Yeah. Is Cardinal considered a local street? No. You're talking about just like neighborhood streets. Right. Okay. Right. So um, let's see. I'm down to 17.35.20. Um, we have the minimum density of six swelling units per acre. 
Um, do you like the minimums? Now, um, Ms. Ms. Craig said correctly, Cardinal Farms is struggling with that. The reason they're struggling with that is because they are, they are an isolated IMA surrounded with rural residential and ag. So they're up against five and 10 unit, 10 acre parcels. And so putting six units an acre next to ten, a one 10 acre piece and a whole bunch of them of farms is a problem. So they're having to buffer the heck out of it to make me happy because I don't want high density next to rural residential areas. So that's that minimum of six is definitely a problem for them, but they are an isolated parcel. Most of the interchange management has some linear growth. They're kind of sticking out. Can you go back to the map, the aerial map? It's one of the earlier ones. Whoops, I wasn't the only one back. So they're the, the far left parcel, that huge one that kind of pops out. Most of it's linear. For them, right behind there is some, some rural. It's rural all the way around that, that southern area. And those are houses that are, are large parcel houses. So putting six dwelling units an acre up there is hard to say that's compatible with it. That's where I'm struggling with this one. So how do you feel about the minimum acreage? I think uh, six dwelling units per acre minimum is ridiculous in a rural residential area. Uh, I almost feel like we can like, can, can we just make some special like considerations or recommendations just for that particular piece of property that would help accommodate what they need. I mean, it, it would, it's like you just said, it's glaring, it's different. I remember we added it into, they mm -hmm. had to come in here and asked to be added into the right. IMA. Why it, can't we just treat that little section a little bit differently, let them develop that the way they want it to, keep it semi-rural, mostly rural, and, and be done with it? Well, we, we are. Um, they're coming before you with a development agreement and a comp plan amendment um, to, to deal with it, but they still are bound by the IMA because it's in the comp plan. So we right. can't deviate from these standards and that minimum density still has to be in play. Yeah, so I, th I think that the six goes out. I would say, in my opinion, a minimum density, you know, a half an acre would be two, two per acre. Uh, or, or, or frankly, or, none at all as a minimum, which is where we have everywhere else. We yeah. usually have, you tell us how much you want to fit there and we'll tell you if it's compatible or not. That's what I think makes the most sense. How did they end up in the IMA anyway? They got approval from the Board of County Commissioners to do so. They asked to be they, added. They asked specifically. Asked added. Yes, they asked specifically. Yes. As you can see, it was pretty much linear. We did, there's some jut outs there, and those are because of parcel ownership. Um, somebody might have owned two lots, the same person. So you can see a, little, a few little jut outs, but that was the only thing there. All right, the no more than 50% of the dwelling units provided may be single family detached. Um, how do you feel about that? Is there any other re requirement like that in the in, uh, land development code that we would deal with for developing on a... Absolutely a not. We, we have certain zonings that wouldn't allow multifamily, period. But when they do allow multifamily, if you want single family mixed, you go. Right here, we're saying you can only have half of it single family. The rest has to be multi. Yeah, no, I don't like that idea. Anybody? I've seen a few head shakes. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough for them to meet. It's been tough for Cardinal Farms, too, believe me. I think they'll be very happy if this gets removed. Um, density may be increased to, um, sorry. Yeah, so this one, uh, you can go as high as 20 units an acre with certain criteria, and that criteria is word for word from 44, where they give us extra um, gathering places, et cetera, and there'll be some stuff in the land development code. So. The, the minimum six would go away and we'd go up to perhaps as high as 20. That's our highest density in Citrus County. Yes, Joanna, what I wanna be sure is when we take away these minimums and mandatories and things that this, this development idea is still possible. You know, like um, if that hospital or whatever mm -hmm. that I, I was speaking of or something large like that did come in and was able to gather up the land and do something amazing out there. We want to make sure it's still possible. Yeah, it absolutely is possible, and I think it's much more probable is where you're going with that. Um, right now, they can develop. This doesn't change that. But if someone, if, if we get the big t town of Tioga, which is thank you for the name, comes in, they can still do it. But they well, have to do a PUD and then They have to do a PUD like anyone, but they have to regardless of whether we change things or not. Right now it's a little difficult for Cardinal Farms to meet this and be compatible with surroundings. So what I wonder though is, you know, with um, the public and what we've been seeing lately when applications come, you know, if it's written in in this IMA and we say, well, this is what the design was for this area, but then they come, they come in for a PUD and they get an opposition. And then it's like... 
Yeah, well, this, this is trying to give the, the basic guidelines that we want, and it's a PUD, and I think, unfortunately, we're always going to get that. <coughs> I mean, we may have to come back before you and, and change things again once we start getting some development in Cardinal. Right now, we're really not because these standards are so hard, frankly. Yeah, please, um, absolutely. I think one of the things that, that's being proposed with this is <coughs> the removal of mandates and the inclusion of incentives. Mm, good right. point. So instead of mandating that they have certain things, we're now – incentivizing that they do certain things so very good point yes that's his offense defense <laughs> criteria there all right um, moving to page 308 um, it's really just wordsmithing um, trying to take out things that I couldn't I, I don't know about spending quality time gathering and lingering I don't really want to say you can linger um, it took out the balanced mix of uses because I can't define that. This is a comp plan where it has to be objective and it's not. Um, still have the promoting a, a, the, the range of housing types is encouraged. Um, senior housing is encouraged near community centers. It's already in our code. Those are those are great things. Just wordsmithing it quite a bit. Took out the block length. Um, I, shorter block lengths are encouraged. Provide mid-block pass-through or plazas to facilitate pedestrian access. I can't define all this as a planner. I have no objective criteria for that. I don't think a block length is going to have any impact on the development of this, so totally struck through that. Um, I also took out the policy that says all development permits issued shall conform to the CMU flume category. That is, is what you ask. If I wanted to put a pool in, technically this policy is saying I'm now CMU. That's not the intent either. That's a scary thing. Um, it, it's unintended, so totally struck through that. Stop me again if I'm talking too much. Um, page 309. So um, took out the cross-access stuff simply because it's, it's later on. There's a whole bunch of stuff about um, that in a moment. Let's see. Um, I, there's the trigger, triggers implementation, and I'm referring to another policy that, that actually will talk about that. Uh, development standards have to be the land use. Um, Let's see. All right, so um, at the bottom of page 309, policy 1735 35, talks about development with the CMU should be located, designed, and screened to minimize offsite impacts. Great, sen great sentence. Um, but then we talk about how do you do that. So the land development regulations are going to have to do that and talk about screening. That's something that we'll let the consultants hash out and bring before you. Um, some, some duplicate stuff on page 310 that was struck through. Um, we did say on 1735.5, a mixture of higher density residential is encouraged through the IMA. I can take out the words higher density based on your discussion. I think mix, maybe a mixture of residential. We're not trying to go higher. That probably was a, was a I was trying to do the mixed use idea. Um, we talk about gray water, that's existing language, wonderful. And so 1735.7 at the bottom of page 310 is the triggers. I did read that at the podium too. Newly proposed for non-residential or mixed use. Expiration of an existing development where they're changing the change in occupancy or adding at least 25%. That's a threshold that's elsewhere in our code and it's on 44. And down to page 311, we're almost done, yay. Um, non-residential, there's the fluoride ratio. So right now it's one. Um, <clears throat> and can go up to 1.5. That, that is the incentive rather than the stick idea, but um, Mr. Stone's comment is t well taken. Do we want a six-story hotel here? Would the height requirements be in the land development code or be here? They can be at either. If they put it in the comp plan, it can't be deviated from. If they're in the land development code, it can. So we can address height requirements in the LDC if you'd like. Um, FAR is going to be a factor because the higher the FAR, the more stories you can go with. Right now, as a 1.0, you can have a fluorier for the entire um, size of the parcel. A one-acre parcel, I can have one acre of floor area is a 1.0 floor area. No, nobody gets that high for the most part. But So basically, 43,560 square feet of floor area, floor area. on a one-acre parcel, yes, if, with a 1.0 floor area ratio. So if it's 1.5, I can go up to 60 some thousand on a one So acre. like the Holiday Inns and the Hampton Inns and stuff like that, the typical type of hotel that we would see in this particular area, 
what what are the floor areas of those kinds of buildings? Those are three stories. Right. GNC has a 0.7 floor area ratio. They're they're meeting that. That's not a problem. 0.7. Okay. Yeah. I'm oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've been talking too much. He's correct. It's one in GNC, so they're meeting the one. The 0.7 is the uh, impervious surface ratio. So yeah. uh, Hampton, et cetera, they're, they're meeting the one. I don't think they're anywhere close to it, though. I don't recall any of them bumping up against it. I don't think so. I think 6, 0.6 and 0.7 is probably what we're seeing for the most part. The only place I can think of that, were, that had a problem bumping up was in the coastal areas. And we we changed that so they so can do if it. we allowed a one which is what is allowed currently, mm -hmm. and they're only doing a point six or a point seven, they could probably add another story then. They could potentially yes. Three, four, they'll have to five have more parking and all the stuff that comes with that. But yes. Right. And I think that's the limiting factors we see when we see those types of developments is, um, you know, they still have to meet open space requirements. They still have to meet the parking requirements, and, and so storm that storm water takes up space mm -hmm. and so you know even if they have a 1.0 floor area ratio they typically can't get that high because the other site divide, site yeah. requirements so. that's true parking is definitely a limitation right so there's like inherent triggers already in there and limitations S somewhat yes they have to provide parking and they have so to provide I think that water. I think that at one would just be that's that, that should just be the only discussion be. point I would have around it is like there's a building that I know in the city of Inverness and you know the city doesn't have a lot of space left and also they don't have a lot of parking so they're proposing this new structure in downtown Inverness and you know they say oh we'll have off-site parking but who knows what that will be and I said well why can't we do a parking underneath well because of the restrictions and everything so I don't know I just I like the idea of being able to provide parking underneath sometimes when it just seems appropriate here but I don't know if that's possible yeah, that's uh, that's a very good idea. I think that would be something we want to put in the LDC rather than a mandate in the comp plan. But I think that's a good idea, and I think that the height limit is also a very good idea that we can convey to the consultant that we should probably do that. So what is what's said right now is if residential development is included in the project, then the maximum fl floor area ratio can be 1.5. We've talked about removing the mixed use, so I think that whole sentence should go away, and it would simply be non-residential, not exceeding 1.0. That's already in the comp plan elsewhere in our future land use element, so I think we're consistent with that. And then we'll talk about, um, talk about heights and talk about um, floor area ratio a little bit more. Well, no, I can't really talk about that. Talk about heights in the LDC. And then the last uh, policy is actually a steal from State Route 44 that uh, open space standards are a flexible standard based on specific design components. So um, we want to encourage it, but we're also giving them in their PUD an allowance. So some sites are going to have a lot of open space, some may not, um, but there's not a mandatory here. It's going to be a PUD, PUD decision. I think that's a good idea. The mandatories, is kind of, they're all different. We know the development's all going to be different from each other. Unless you want to put a minim minimum open space here. Joanna, a question. Mm -hmm. Is the county going to invest in this at all, at all? like for public open spaces and, and recreation or? Not, not that I'm aware of, no. We're, we're throwing all our money to uh, road, road projects right now. So. How about a county building uh, for workers to go to locally? <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? No, I, there's no plans for that. Wouldn't it be consistent to have open space at 20% or no? It's not, you want to give them flexibility? We can. We can put in 20% or 25% or even 30% at like a PUD, or we can do flexibility. Or we can put in the land development code where it's um, deviation as possible. If I put it here, you're stuck. It, it, it is what it is. So. Well, I say don't be stuck here, and then we'll work it out on the back end. Yeah, so uh, so uh, we're encouraging it, but I think the LDC is where that open space requires because each parcel is so different. Each project's gonna be different. Joanna, where is the nearest fire station for, to this area? Is that the one in Sugar Mill on Oak Park? No, Oklahoma? there's one on Grover Cleveland, right? I think so, yeah. Uh, fire's have heavily been heavily involved in all of the discussions with Cardinal Farms. Trail. Yeah, I'm sorry? Home Assassin Trail. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And, and the, our fire people have been very heavily involved with the Carnival Farms discussions, and they're well aware. So they're, they're dealing with that, fortunately. Yeah. 
we'll have their input for you for Cardinal Farms on that. I think the Sugar Mill Fire Station is closer, though. It might be. Yeah. I, I don't know. I totally rely on Craig Stevens. He's on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's on top of this somehow. So I, 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 I will get his input for Cardinal Farms. Or do you have something, Eric? You know better. I, I believe Chief has uh, a site on Cardinal that for future for a fire station. I think there's like a six acre, six acre, six acre parcel. That, that he's eyeing already. I think so. There you go. Yeah. He, he's very progressive. I, I, I totally trust Chief Stevens on that, yeah. I, I just want to uh, mention something out loud so I remember it for when we're talking about it next time. Um, the height requirements with the floor area ratio of one and then the minimum lot sizes of like three acres that we're dealing with and five acres, that allows for a very large floor area ratio. So we definitely need to put the building height limitations in there that will cap if, if I could I think one of the things that <clears throat> because I was reading this again where it says if residential is included in the project then you can have an increased FAR I think that was really intended for vertical mixed use so if you had like a, com a commercial component on the ground floor and then you wanted to go up with residential it would it would give you a little bit more floor area ratio to do something like that but but we can not. we can put that in the height limits as well. You know, if you right. if you have a mixed use development, you can go higher or something. We can do something like that. FAR is locking in though at one if we have it in here, but it is the currently general commercial. It's locked in in the comp plan. There's no way to deviate from that. Yeah, I just I just want to wrap up with one final comment and then I'll let it lie. Um, this particular plan, whatever we change and whatever gets instituted, whether it's on the comp plan side or the land development code side, it needs to just reflect a residential exchange area, a residential interchange area with, with services that are required for the amount of people that are in that area. F focus on that and then I, I believe that it will develop the way that we see it. And we, we sort of have an example of how things are gonna develop and how it's gonna look right at the corners of 486 and 491. I know that's not an interchange management area, but like you can just kind of see the way things are going. And I, I believe that if we if we make it possible, it'll be and we we regulate it through the land development code. And and I'm obviously, thank you very much, Joanna, for coming back. And I know you weren't part of this particular plan, but to be able to be here and clean up a lot of the stuff that a lot of us up here sat and said why. Uh, that's a that's a huge help and a benefit for the county. Thank you, thank you Commissioner Bramlett. You stole my thunder. I was going to say thank you to staff also <laughs> for coming back with something that we can really um, actually see in our future rather <laughs> than what we had in the past. And I appreciate all your time and effort. Thank you. Sorry it took a while, but we're getting there. Can we uh, talk just very briefly about landscaping 35.6? talks about landscaping it's pretty general pretty boilerplate and my, com my comments probably don't really apply to the cardinal interchange but maybe on a, a broader scale to the county um, when retail uh, developments occur here and everywhere in Florida you know landscaping is a big discussion at least this board and the Citrus County Commission uh, buffers and the like. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about that, but after I visited some other retail establishments in, uh, in the immediate area, it occurred to me what separates the ones that really pop at you as, as a nice development are the ones that have interior landscaping, not so much. They've got the exterior buffers, you know, what we have, but when you, when you go in to the parking areas between the, the retail stores and you see a very nice nicely landscaped parking area I think that separates the people's perception when they go to shop is this is this a nice area or is this does this look like all the rest of them where the developer put in the cheapest plants and trees <laughs> that they could yeah, to yeah, totally, totally agree with you on that. Um, like, if you look at the Walmart side on 46, not a good example. That was our very first small box. Um, but when when Target develops, you'll see in the newer pods, you're seeing uh, the ten space. Every ten spaces have to have a landscaped area, and we don't waver from that. So, um, 
they're they're going to be they're getting better. The ones that are the newer ones are going to be much much better. I agree with you. We're we're very conscious of that. I think we rewrote the code because people were misunderstanding the 10, 10 contiguous parking space requirement. I think it's pretty good now. Um, I, I think that mostly the developments. You agree? I mean, yeah, we've in the permits that we've seen for the developments up around the corner at forty six and four ninety one. We've been pushing for better interior landscaping, so. Sometimes it's a challenge, but our code, our code, <laughs> oh. our code, code definitely mandates some that, that it's hard to get them to do, but you'll see the older developments, the sea of parking was normal. This is Florida, it's too hot for that, much less how it looks, so. Right. Yeah, and I, 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 I raise that issue because I know some of the county commissioners are uh, very concerned about that. They, mm -hmm. they want it to be a nice retail area, and I think that's how it, how we can make them nice. Agreed. Yeah, we're forgetting about the maintaining part of it after they put it in. Maintain, yeah. And, and that's a requirement. So if someone complains, that, you know, if if the permit's long closed and someone complains, we have, we do cite them for code. It's not very often yep. that people complain. So we talked about that before, and then yeah. um, so the city of Crystal River, when you have to do plantings, they require watering and sprinklering and stuff. And, and I mentioned so, that. So do we? Yeah, and, and I did. You check just on said it. it may, you said it. It said it had to be maintained. And that's exactly what Chris River has, too. She, oh. said, she sent me the language. It's exactly the same. So maintain means it could die. They just have to replant it. Well, yeah, I guess I guess if there's a little time frame, but, you know, you can't die and then next year replant, you know. Right. Right. Yeah, they have the exact same language. Okay. I did check on that. I remember that, but I never got yep. back to you. Okay, that's what triggered that. <laughs> Anything All else? Right. Anything else? All right, I do need a recommendation on this. It is an application, please. Uh, I feel like we wrote most of it down, right? So we right. So the only the, thing that, the discussion. Yeah. The only thing that you skipped over that you didn't mm. uh, mention, I saw you write it though, was where I talked about the truck stops with vehicle yes. repair. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a really good idea. So it would be um, page three hundred six truck stops that include truck repair, not vehicle repair. I think that was a good clarification. <laughs> well, she's not here to complain about the motion. I showed her all our motions, and she said they're all the same. So I think she'll be rewriting motions for you oh, soon. Thank you. So, Joanne, we'll make a motion now to uh, to recommend these. approval with conditions for our discussions. Yes. And then, when when do we get to see a final copy of that, or do we get it? I can send it to you once I'm done with this meeting. You know, once I write it, it won't be today, but I can send you what what's going on to the board of county commissioners based on your comments. Do you want me to make it, or was that it? No, you're fine. Oh, okay. Yes. That Mr. Was just Chair, a question. for the purpose of a motion, the Planning and Development Commission finds application number CPA-2024-00002 <laughs> consistent with the Comprehensive Plan and Citrus County Land Development Code. And we recommend approval with um, the changes that we mentioned here today of the application to the Board of County Commissioners based upon the uh, testimony presented and the staff report and conclusions regarding this petition. We got a first by Commissioner Worthington, a second by Commissioner Facemeyer. Any other further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 7 0. Those are wonderful comments. Thank you. Um, I'm going on to staff comments at the end. How's that? First of yes. all, I'm not trying to ignore you. Do you have anything you wanted to talk about? I did want to talk about the tablets a little bit. Um, we got through the meeting. Good job, guys. Um, but I had a couple people come up to me with different various ideas. Um, one was maybe a little more training on how to utilize the tablet to its best ability and um, perhaps getting printouts of the large PUD documents. Um, so I want to get some feedback on that. I would say that uh, in the OneDrive, wherever there's like the home base, the home page, we need the um, motions and, and oh, stuff like that yeah. added to it. Would be kind of nice to have the land development code. I don't know how large or what some of some of the excerpts for some of that. If it's in a OneDrive on just the storage, okay. it's not actually stored on the unit. It's just in the cloud. If we wanted to reference it, it'd be kind of nice to have that. You can add it to your home screen. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but I got used to like having 
the information provided to me differently where it was staff report for I kind of like that as a from a reader perspective I don't know if that's possible but yeah so what we're giving it to you is the order and it's presented in the meeting which is what we do for the commissioners so it's the applicant um, it, it's the PowerPoint from the coordinator then the applicant all the applicant stuff then the county PowerPoint and the county staff report we just do it in the order of presentation I'll get used to it yeah I'm sorry <laughs> In my book, I could in the see book, this. it's always staff report first. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. But you have to scroll down to the staff report. Understood. So, did you want? Um, do you need extra time with the meet with the the tablets? Do you want some training, or do you not need that? Oh, gotcha. I would say at least an hour, as opposed to being fumble around here and going. Okay, and then maybe work on it. Work yeah, on yeah. A, another a, some a little more training. I know I thought you got training, but you really just got sign on. So I didn't realize that. For example, like I went through everything, highlighted everything, and then when I came back in, it went poof. It was gone. <laughs> okay. So then Understood. I had to do it all over again. So there's, there's got to be something, some way to save it other than saving it, because you save it is only for that session, right. and then when you sign back out, come back in. It's, so I don't. In the larger puds, especially when they're in color or whatever, if you don't want to zoom in on your packet, we can print out those and get those to you if you want the master plan. Is that something that you'd like? That would help. No. Yes. I was zooming in today fine, but I'm, I'm not used to the big plans. My desk isn't that big. So I think we'll make those available to you if you want, and we can try to do that with the large plans. Um, speaking of large plans, um, next, well, actually, next one, next meeting, you only have a conditional use. It should be very good. That's April 4th. Um, the next meeting after that, April 18th, we have three applications. One of them is a comp plan text amendment for the manatee element, so that definitely will have some, that, element has not been touched for a long time so that'll be interesting we also have a very large development here on 491 that's a, a comp plan pud um, called the crossings that we'll hear that's the second meeting in april i don't have any meetings scheduled for not having a meeting in the near future we're certainly very very busy now but your next meeting will only be one application oh and miss scrag the alternate she has um retired resigned from the board um, I think she might have tried to send some of you some emails on that. So we will be advertising for another alternate. We definitely uh, regret losing her, and we'll we'll seek out another another person. Thank you, Joanna. God, I feel like I've talked all day. <laughs> you guys go now. <laughs> Whatever you need. Uh, any other uh, commissioner comments? Yeah. All right. See you in two weeks. Meeting right. adjourned. Thank you.